Good morning, it's Valerie, and um, it's a Wednesday morning, cool, cloudy, um, weather doesn't know what it's going to do, it's, <laughs> as they say in Virginia, it's anybody's guess. Um, so anyway, I just decided this morning that I wanted to um, show you how I plan to make um, a baby soap. Um, it would be good for anybody, but I'm specifically making this um, for my sister. Um, she requested the other day when she came to get soap, her new grandson, well, he's not quite a year old. <clears throat> he's experiencing some eczema, and they've tried several different things. And she said, you really need to make a baby soap. And I said, well, I have one or two that I would say were really, really gentle. But it got me to thinking, what can I do for my great nephew? And um, so I put together this little formula, and I hope that it's going to do him some good. I make no medical claims. Um, can't do that. But I have read... A lot about what makes a good soap to help with eczema and um, I did a Bastille soap the other day that was 80 I think it was 80% olive oil but I, I and I love it I do but my mind is always spinning so I started reading and researching different things um, that are supposedly really soothing to eczema. I've, I've heard that there is no cure for eczema, but that there are ways to soothe it, and so that's what I'm hoping to do for my great nephew. Here are several of the things that I printed off that I am going to be using in this soap. Several of them I use in every soap, but um, the first one is aloe vera gel, and a good friend of mine gifted me with a huge aloe vera plant. So I have scraped out just a little bit, and I'm going to add it. Um, this is a small batch, it's a 16 ounce batch. And I'm going to add it, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna add it to the cook probably going to do it when I add my honey. I may just mix it right in with my honey, um, which I'll add later. <clears throat> and the properties of aloe vera gel are supposed to be an antibacterial, antimicrobial, immune system boosting, and I, if I'm understanding it correctly, um, eczema is kind of an autoimmune problem um, and wound healing I know it's supposed to be good for burns so um, it just says that this can soothe dry itching skin that comes with eczema so I have that the next one is apple cider vinegar and I add that to all of my soaps after the cook so it does hold the properties um, it is, according to what I've read and printed, it's, it's, pop, it's a popular home remedy for many conditions, including skin disorders. The National Eczema Association report that apple cider vinegar may help with the condition. However, they recommend using caution, um, which is like anything. It's supposed to balance the skin's acidity levels um, <clears throat> which is great. It's good at fighting bacteria. <clears throat> so that's, that's good to know. Colloidal oatmeal. I usually use colloidal oatmeal in my soaps. I add it to my warm oils. Um, it's said to help with skin dryness, scaling, roughness, and itch intensity. I don't think I'm going to add colloidal oatmeal today. If I do, it's just going to be a little bit because I've opted to use my own cooked strained oatmeal. 
and I'm going to be using about two ounces of this and I cooked the oatmeal and ran it through a sieve and just pushed out the the thick I think Valerie Mosher calls it jelly um, but this just looks amazing so I may forego the colloidal if I do it's just going to be a teaspoon um, because this is going to be fantastic and I am going to add it while I'm bringing it to trace um, <clears throat> let's see amazingly enough there's so much controversy about coconut oil being drying for the skin and I know that to be true but it says it's really good for eczema um, it, because it contains healthy fatty acids that can moisturize the skin which can help people with dry skin and eczema so I'm going to use just a small amount. I'm going to do 5% um, in my formula. So, of course, if you're allergic to coconut, you shouldn't use it. Okay, honey. Honey I use every time. And I'm using some locally made honey. It's, there's no additives, and this stuff smells amazing usually i add one tablespoon per pound of oils but this one i'm going to add two i have been pushing the envelope as you might say with honey but i just add more than i usually go a tablespoon or two more and i add it after the cook and um, it's just wonderful for a lather booster so those are the, the things that I'm going to be adding. Another thing that I read is I love calendula anything. So I have, I always keep some calendula <clears throat> in olive oil. So I'm going to be using quite a bit of this. I don't have enough, but I'm going to add all that I have. Um, because this formula is 75% um, olive oil, so I'm going to use as much of that as possible, um, as much of my calendula olive oil as I can get out of this, and the rest I'll use regular olive oil. So my recipe today is 10% um, castor oil, which is for the bubbles, and it's also very conditioning. 5% coconut oil, 75% olive oil, and 10% cocoa butter. And everything that I read, it said that coconut oil, um, cocoa butter and shea butter are really good for uh, skin conditions. So I like to cook with um, coconut oil. I love, shoot, I'm sorry, I can't talk today cocoa butter. I love the smell. I, I hope that some of it's going to come through after the cook because I'm not going to be scenting with anything, um, nor am I going to be coloring. Um, it's just going to be natural for his skin. And i um, hoping that I'm going to get, you know, a, a sweet, natural smell for him. Babies smell sweet anyway, but um, sometimes um, so anyway my numbers are of course the hardness number is going to be really low because it's mostly olive oil and the cleansing was a 3 which I really liked conditioning is a 76 bubbly is a 12 but we all know we can boost that and that's what I'm hoping to do with my additives. I'm also going to be adding coconut milk afterwards. Um, creamy is a 28, iodine 77, INS 117, and some people are going to get really, um, I don't know what the word to use is, but they're going to, you know, maybe balk on that, but we also know that 100% olive oil soap gets really, really hard. So I'm, I'm high, highly hoping that this is going to be good for him. 
And um, as I said, I'm not making any claims. Um, I'm just going by what I've read that is really good for the skin. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get things measured out and heated up and I will bring you back. I also want to say I do not consider myself a good teacher. I am more of a demonstrator of the way that I do things. I, I don't, I've never considered myself a really good teacher. Um, but I just share with you the things that I've learned, the things that I've read. Um, I have trouble sometimes my thoughts, um, especially when I'm on camera and not going by a, a piece of paper with notes um, scripted because I just, I tend to wing things sometimes. So please don't think that I'm telling you, you know, I don't have the soap making Bible. Um, or my way, it's just what I do and how I do it. And um, you can follow it if you want, and if you don't, you don't have to. And of course, you know, this is a journey for every soap maker, so you find what's good for you, tweak it, you know, yours will, could be better, but just have fun with it and be safe while you're doing it. So I will see you back soon. Sorry for the long introduction. I just wanted to share a little bit about why I do what I, I'm going to do. Well, I am ready to start this baby <clears throat> formula soap. And boy, <laughs> this is a new small crock pot and it gets hot fast. I was just lollygagging around, taking my time, choosing which molds I was gonna use, blah, blah, blah. And I checked my oils thinking, oh, they're probably around 150. They're at 190, and it's, so I need to get going. Um, gloves are on, sleeves are on, goggles going on. Workspace is clean, that's vital uh, when you're making soap. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, and this is aloe vera juice with Tussa Silk, and I did opt to to add about two teaspoons of colloidal oatmeal and um, two teaspoons of kale and clay to my warmed oils. So let's go ahead, pour my lye down this shaft to keep it from splashing up so much and fewer air bubbles, although air bubbles aren't quite as important in hot process as they are cold but I do it mainly to keep it from splashing out on me. I do expect, because this is so warm, so hot, and because it's a high olive oil content, I do expect a good bit of separation. Now, this is an ounce and a half of my cooked strained oatmeal, and I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in right now. I wish I loved oatmeal. I wish I liked oatmeal to eat, but I've just never been able to make myself like it. And I don't know why, because both of my kids love it. Don't like grits either. Okay. I'm going to bring this to a medium trace, and I wanted to tell you that calendula infused olive oil is the prettiest golden color. You can probably see that. And I had just enough to use for this formula, so I had to put some more in to start the infusion.
and I just wanted to leave you on so you could see how long it would take for this to come to a medium trace and we are there and that was probably just a minute or so but I'm gonna go a little further that took just about another minute to get it to this consistency which I love and as I say every time this is probably my favorite stage of the cook I just love the creamy rich look of this it's just gorgeous so I don't know how long it's going to take um, again this is another new formula for me um, I do expect a good bit of separation so um, and like I told you earlier I, I don't consider myself to be a a great teacher but more a demonstrator um, I just like you know helping others and we all have our own way of helping others and number one just sharing what we know and what we've learned is is one way um, but making soap in general can be a way of helping others because it gives them something great for their skin if we do it correctly and that is the name of the game is making a great conditioning and non-stripping non-drying bar of soap um, so that's one way of helping others and you know I love to give my soaps to people who have a, a cancer diagnosis or an illness or a loss um, I have been known to take and, and this is not a pat on the back this is just yeah I, I do I donate soaps to our church food pantry and the um, domestic violence shelter or the pregnancy center because so many people need great things for their skin and they can't afford it and you know this is I'm, I'm getting off of that because it's only been about a minute a minute and a half and it's already starting to rise up um, and and I can see major separation around the sides so I'm gonna leave you on just a little bit longer to see what this does my crock pots on low I think I'm gonna turn it off because this is only the second time I've used it and I am finding out it cooks very hot yep there it comes so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a stir and for those who are new to my channel um, we my husband and I are self-employed so some my phone rings often so sometimes I may have to cut you out to answer it it just depends on you know what I think is important <laughs> we get a lot of spam calls and some people are like well why do you even have a landline still well I have a landline because I think they're a little more trustworthy a little more reliable plus I do a lot of faxing and um, you know I'm not into the virtual faxing and all of that I'm not that technology savvy but gotta have a landline to do the faxes the old-fashioned way so um, there it is separating we're at applesauce stage um, it's a pretty pretty yellowy mm, buttery color don't know if it's gonna stay that way so I'm gonna come back when it's doing more than just sitting there well it's been about five minutes and it's still at applesauce still cooking along but it's also still majorly separating which as I said I expected so I'm gonna get this back together using my stick blender 
Just going to give it some short bursts. it in the cooking unit to hold heat and when I say things like we all know I guess I just take for granted that only soap makers watch this but I have to realize I was a new soap maker once and I watched and no I didn't know everything that other people know so just excuse my choice of words sometimes. Okay, we're getting ready to get another volcano. I love watching videos to this day I, I, I watch them every one I can whether it be cold process or hot process I just love watching soap videos you can learn so much from so many different people and if you've never watched a, a Valerie Mosher video you need to go and do that because she has a wealth of information on her channels for new soapers all the way up to the advanced she is a teacher I'm more of a demonstrator um, there are a lot of cold process soap makers that I love to watch their videos just design um, I will make a, a cold process batch every once in a while but Hot process is my first love. This is more of a high temperature hot process. And I didn't mean for it to, you know, be that. I, I wanted to start around 160. And um, Ioni from Eve's Garden, she does wonderful designs. Um, Tiggy from Future Primitive Soap Making. I love watching her. Um, she does mainly cold process, I think. But I, I subscribe to her channel. Love to watch her. She's so energetic and she comes up with some of the coolest names. So, anyway, that is back to you know it's still separating some but it's better than it was so this is almost a mashed potato before long that's going to be completely mashed potato over into Vaseline and just like that within five minutes <laughs> we had mashed potato into Vaseline so I have a little bit taken out of my container and um, it's cooled, and I'm going to stick it to my tongue. And if it doesn't zap me like a battery, then it is completely lye-free. Yep, I'm good. Just tastes like soap. <sighs> Yuck. Oh, boy. Uh, okay. So the next thing I'm adding here are my warmed or uh, additives that I've had on the stove. This is my super fat of shea oil and shea, I mean jojoba oil and shea butter. If you remember, I, I couldn't decide between cooking with shea butter or cocoa butter. So I opted to cook with cocoa butter and super fat with shea butter. And I did 5% in the formula and an extra 3% after the cook. And 
and this is a thick batter. So just give it a spray with, this is hot water, and that'll help keep your sides clean and from getting all in your, your soap. And the next thing I'm going to add is my yogurt. I'm doing one heaping tablespoon because I have one pound batch. Stir this in really well to keep it from cooking onto your sides because the crock pot, which actually I need to take that out. I don't need any added heat right now because it's hot. And this helps to loosen things up and start to cool things down some. It's also a great dairy additive. If you are trying to do a vegan soap, you can omit the yogurt for like soy yogurt. coconut yogurt. I think that's what I did once. Okay. The next thing I'm going to add is two ounces of coconut milk and I had reserved this from the original formula to add after the cook to help with fluidity and I don't know how fluid it's going to be but to make it pour manageable hopefully enough to get it into my individual molds. And I add it slowly and it is hot because it will cook as well if you don't mix it well. And I, I think I did, I don't think I told you where I opted to put the aloe vera gel. I added it in with my oatmeal, my cooked strained oatmeal that I added to the stick blend. Don't know that it's going to hold any of those properties, but and I used aloe vera juice for my lye liquid. And I'm using 38% water as the percentage of my oil weight. And it's still thick. And it's given my arm quite a workout, even this small batch. I can take these gloves off because I have no lie left. Get that mixed in really, really well. And then I'm going to take my temperature before proceeding to adding my honey and apple cider vinegar. Because I don't like to add my honey until it's 170 or below. And it says we're at 158. And that was pulling it up from the bottom where it's more accurate. It's always best to work from the bottom up because you get a more accurate temperature. Yep, it still says I'm 158 to 159, so we're good. And in here, I have two tablespoons of honey. I have one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and two teaspoons of sodium lactate, all which are great for the skin, for lather. The sodium lactate is also going to help with hardness. And this should smooth things out and thin things down to make it to, more easy to pour. And 
I'm going to have to pause you for this one. Hey, sorry about that. That was my mom, and she is usually one of the um, calls that I don't ignore because she's had some health problems, she and my dad both. And um, I usually don't ignore my daughters. Sometimes I ignore my husband. <laughs> Just depends. Um, but anyway, this is very nice and um, this is the color. And that's the consistency. So I'm probably not going to have enough of these individual molds, but that's okay. I'll just make one for myself. So I'm really not going to be doing anything except pouring. I don't know how interesting you'll find that. But I just wanted to show you that you can get some, you know, nice workable and I consider this pourable it's not thin but it's pourable and it always helps when you have these flimsy molds to put them on something solid so that we can bang them down and I'm making these little guest size soaps because it's easier to hold And I'll come back in and fill them up more. And it smells naturally sweet. Like I said, they say that when you have eczema or skin conditions that oftentimes it's best to stay unscented and uncolored. So that's what I did and um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off and I'll bring you back maybe not while I'm unmolding them but afterwards see you soon hey welcome back um, I didn't bring you back while I was unmolding them because let's face it there's not really much exciting about that but um, they did turn out really cute I, I didn't have any baby molds, so I just opted to go with these. And these are little, I call them, you know, guest size, trial size, um, nice hand size. Um, I even like the, the bottoms, um, the way I've roughed it up a little bit. I just think they're really pretty. Um, there's that one that says soap, and then there are these that say 100% handmade. Um, then the round one that says 100% handmade. Um, they smell really sweet and really nice. And then I made myself um, this one. just has a little, I don't know, that's a clover or, or what it is, but I um, thought that was really cute. Um, I go around because the mold doesn't get them really smooth if you put a lot in it and I'll go around lightly and just shave off the little corners but I'm not one that likes to have mine look perfect you may be you may want to go in and plane them and bevel them and all of that me I tend to like the looks of um, handmade and homemade so you know, I don't want them to look bad, but I do like the homemade look, the handmade look. So that is my baby soap, and I'm going to take some pictures, and um, I'll see you the next time, and you all have a great day. By the way, when I cleaned the crock pot, I, I had a video of running water into the crock pot so that you could see the bubbles that were on that and and it's only keep in mind a bubbly number of 12 but all of the extra additives help you know boost that and 
as I was adjusting the camera to zoom you in, it flew off and went across the room. And I couldn't, I can't figure out how to trim and cut videos. So I just deleted it. But this feels so good. And it has quite the lather to have only the uh, bubbly number of 12. So, um, and I'll post the formula if you're interested. Like I said before, you don't have to do what I do. It's just, you know, right now I'm, I'm playing with a higher olive oil percentage. Um, I'm trying to keep my costs down because those of you that make soap know that ingredients and oils and things have gone up. And I don't want to have to inflict that on my customers. So rather than raise my prices, I'm working on great formulas um, with fewer oils um, to, to keep it affordable for them because I want them to be able to continue to use my soaps. Um, so anyway, just a little note about that and you all have a great afternoon. Decided to bring you back for a lather test with my sample bar. And I am, I'm afraid to move this camera because I don't want to send you flying across the room again. But this soap smells so sweet and so amazing. And look at that. I'm very, very happy. And it feels like silk. So I'm, you know, I'm not telling anybody how to make soap. And there are certainly so many different specialty oils and things that you can use. But if I can get a lather like this, and I mean, this is a cleansing number of three. And it feels fantastic. I'm just, anyway, just wanted to show you that. And I will see you next time.